Tippy time, my damies. Topcat here, and welcome back to the channel. Today is episode three of this five-part series focusing on onslaught. Today we are looking at stasis, but if you want a strand or arc build, check the links at the end of this video. Stasis works really well in here, as we have the ability to control the pace at which we are invaded. Great damage reduction and quick grenade cooldowns across all characters. And on the advice of Shax, we need to throw more grenades. There will be a dim link for all three of my builds in the description below, and they'll be segmented in the timeline. First up, we have the Behemoth using the Strongholds. I chose these as Behemoth make tons of ice. So much so, it can actually be a detriment to your team if you don't shatter it with gusto. So we're going to need to get aggro and the Strongholds allow for that. Its perk is Clench Fist. This maximizes the guard stats on our swords. We take reduced damage whilst blocking with the sword, and when rapidly damaged targets after blocking shots with a sword, this grants us restoration for a duration determined by the number of shots blocked. The thicker the mess, the better this thing performs. This is great for taking on those big boys and miners, as swords are very efficient on ammo. Our Lament is a natural fit, as it's Banshee's Whale Attack, by which we block to rev it up, and then we spam that Light Attack. This harmonizes into a nice death and health loop. Its perk is Rev Consumption. This takes it even further, as by damaging an enemy, we heal ourselves. This is particularly helpful against those thicker targets. By thick, I mean big, not like Rain Man. Hive, bring a sword. It's got anti-barrier, so it's great against knights and servitors also. But I use it against the smallest thrall to the thickest god, as Tireless Blade will return ammo to us on powered kills. The Tectonic Harvest aspect will create stasis shards when shattering crystals. These refund us melee energy on pickup. The Shiver Strike melee is a powerful utility tool for breaking crystals, and landing a direct hit will slow, so it's going to be great against our overload. But I mainly want these shards for my mod loop. Whisperer Conduction will track these stasis shards towards me. We double stack elemental charge. This will give us a chance of an armor charge from our stasis shards. And this is going to fuel our grenade kickstarter mod. The glacial grenade is strong in both form and function. It's got great utility as we can wall off areas until we are ready to deal with them. It's shattered as tremendous direct damage and AoE damage, and it's perfectly suited for spawn traps. If you know where they're gonna spawn, just dunk down that crystal, they spawn up, blow themselves up. Whispered Chains, whilst we are near a frozen target, or a stasis crystal, we take reduced damage. I'm finding DR a lot stronger than Restoration in Onslaught, as enemies don't like to let up, and it often takes longer to chew through them, thus, chunking into your restoration time. Whisper of Fishes is going to increase the damage and size of the burst of our shatters, an absolute must have for any behemoth. Whisper of Shards boosts our grenade recharge rate whenever we shatter a crystal. At base our grenades have a 2.5 minute cooldown. 100 Discipline brings that to 116. Whisper of Torment gives us grenade energy whenever we take damage. So now we can get grenades in as little as 12 seconds. This build uses the Stasis Trinity and the Artifact in order to make more crystals. These not only give us Shatter and Slow, but also give us more pockets of DR from which we can eat damage from. I pair this with the Strand Trinity. Unraveling Particles pairs very nicely with the Stasis, making a sort of Darkness Tornado. And lastly, you cannot underestimate just how good the Glacial Quake is. It has the highest base damage potential of all our roaming supers. It clears ads very easily. It freeze traps movements. It can spawn trap enemies by being slammed like pre-spawn. The bad guys arrive, break the crystals and die immediately. And it works against every boss we have here in Onslaught, even the Shrieker. Just learn how to keep your range so that the largest crystals land at the main target feet. And utilize your surroundings. If you're too close to a target, maybe use a wall or something to get the shatter up and over them. Shatter, dead, boom. 
There will be a dim link in the description below or pause here for my mods, artifact layout and armor stats. Next up we have the Hunter with the Renewal Grasps. Equip the Dust Field, the Grasp will increase the footprint of them. These reduce the damage output of targets that are inside your Dust Field. Or alternatively you can place one of these at your feet so you and your allies receive less damage. Best of both worlds, you can get in nice and close so you hurt less and they do less. Think of it much like Strand's Woven Mail and Sever Burbage. Touch of Winter will add a Stasis Crystal into the center of your Dust Field. And Whisper of Chains will equip your undies on the outside so bullets just bounce off you with all that additional damage reduction we get by being near a Stasis Crystal. And when those crystals aren't around, I like to use Emergency Resist. We use Grim Harvest so our slowed and frozen targets create us shards for more melees. Two shurikens can freeze, but they like bounce off and around people like a nice big ping pong game. This neutralizes the pack quite easily. Conduction tracks those shards to us, and Durance will increase the duration and the linger of our slow effects. The Whispering Blade is an integral part of our slow loop. I utilize Gambler's Dodge to get more of them. Momentum Transfer reduces our grenade cooldown when I damage with a dust field. With Impact Induction, causing damage with a melee loops back grenade energy. Bolstering Detonation grants us class ability on grenade damage and Bomber grants us grenade energy when we use our Gambler's Dodge. It's all a giant mod orgy in order to give us 8 second dodges, 10 second melees and 12 second grenades. With Powerful Attraction we dodge to collect orbs. This activates innovation for better grenade cooldown and replenishes us with health. Stacks on stacks will grant us two armor charges for the price of one, all fueling that EMS mod for a bit of rainy day resist when it goes a bit peak tong. The silence and score slows it all down. It mightn't kill a boss, but it will keep your foes off that ADU. As we're dodging and fisting a bunch, Hands on and Dynamo will push our super regeneration. It's already got a nice low cooldown, so you'll have this often. Fishes increases both the strength of our super and all our shatter gameplay. And shards will again boost our grenade regeneration when we shatter crystals. So as that crystal is about to time out, make sure you shatter it and you'll have another one in mere moments. I was quite partial to the navigator with this kit. A lot of you guys recommended the Age of Scepter to me, but I actually found I had more than enough stasis on the battlefield already. And if I utilize both the stasis trinity and the strand trinity, I have tons of tick damage that can compound with my shatter damage. Pause here for all my mods, there is a dim link in the description below. Make sure to hit that thumbs if you are digging it. And last but not least, we have that Warlock with the Osmiomancies. These give us an additional grenade charge as long as we utilize the Cold Snap Grenade. But our primary utility for these will be with the Bleak Watcher aspect. These are nuts in Onslaught. They've always been really good in Grandmasters, but they can control wave after wave, allowing us to shoot our foes at our own pace, not theirs. Endurance will beef up our slow and linger to make more freezes from our slows. Chains is going to keep us nice and safe whilst we are perusing our garden of ice sculptures like Winona. Fishes makes our shatters burst and spread like COVID. And shards will increase our grenade recharge rate off the back of that. As with this build I was generally playing fullback, I'm running powerful attraction to collect the orbs from my allies when I plant my rift. Stacks on stacks will double that charge so I can double that grenade kickstarter so I can spam out turret after turret. I liked using the recurrent with subsistence and headstone. It lent me some great DR as I moved my way up the battlefield. Again I've equipped the stasis trinity. No strand this time as my super is the winter's wrath. And whilst the super is great in a pinch it's not great outright. 
Even with the Balados Wraith Weavers, I found the Super could only really take down a few foes. I swear Bolts does really help it, but I found that my Super Energy will be better spent using it on the Aegis Scepter. This has a powerful overcharge function that deals additional damage, tons are slowed, leading to freezes, which makes it a great tool against Unstop Champions. It can mow through waves or deal great boss damage from afar, making this trace go from a special damage to a heavy damage with that long press of the reload. It can also then be turned off once all our foes have been decommissioned. We just hold it down again, save that alt energy. Feel free to pause here for all my mods, but there will be a dim link in the description below. When Onslaught came out, I thought it would have been Strand that was the strongest. But I've found more success with Stasis, as I've found your allies tend to share in its assets more so. But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm currently working on my Void builds, and I'd love to hear what your favourites are. Don't forget to thumb it if you dug it, sub if you're new, and as always, tippy time my damies, what a time.